Not all data are the same. Next, we will discuss the different ways to classify statistical data. A statistical variable is a characteristic that varies from one object to another. For example, age, major, GPA, and the desired grade are not all the same for all the students. Therefore, each one of them is a statistical variable. The values of a variable for one or more people or things yields data. Here's an example of data collected from three students. Most variables and data can be put into the following categories, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data consists of names and labels describing the attributes of a population, such as hair color, blood type, ethnic group, the car a person drives, or the street that the person lives on. Qualitative data are generally described by words or letters. For instance, hair color might be black, dark brown, or blonde. Blood type might be AB positive, O negative, or B positive. Quantitative data consists of numbers that are the result of counting or measuring attributes of a population, such as the amount of money, pulse rate, weight, number of people living in your town, or number of students who takes a course. While numbers usually mean quantities, in general, not every number represents a quantity. For example, zip codes do not mean quantities, therefore they are qualitative rather than quantitative type. Also, phone numbers, student IDs, don't mean quantities, and since they are unique for each subject, they are called identifiers. Qualitative data can be further classified as categorical or ordinal. Ordinal data have a natural ordering, such as the letter grades, clothing size, or Likert scale. Qualitative data without a natural order is called categorical. For example, callers or college majors. There is also a special type of categorical data called binary, when there are only two possible answers to a question, such as yes-no or agree-disagree. Quantitative data can be further classified as either discrete or continuous. All possible values of discrete data can be listed, while all possible values of continuous data form a continuous interval. For example, quantities, weights, rounded to pounds, ages in years, are some examples of discrete type. Note that discrete data doesn't mean that the list must be finite. On the other hand, the exact incomes weights or heights, and time are some examples of continuous type. Here's an example of different types of data collected from the same set of TV shows. Rank is discrete type. Show title is the identifier. Network is categorical. And number of viewers is continuous. Which type of data is more complex or more sophisticated? From the least complex and most boring on the left to the most complex and interesting on the right, we can organize the data types in the following way. Note that everything we can do with a less complex data type, we would also be able to do with a more complex data type. That is, we can do with discrete data everything that we can do with categorical data and some more. Another way to classify data is by the type of math operations that can be applied to the elements of the data set. As a result, we have four levels of measurements, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio level. The nominal level is when the data cannot be arranged in any ordering scheme. For example, the answers yes, no, undecided, or political party affiliation. The ordinal level is when the data can be arranged in some order, but differences between data values either cannot be determined or are meaningless. For example, grades and ranks. The difference between A and B is not numerical nor meaningful. The interval level is when the data can be arranged in some order for which the differences between data values are meaningful, but there is no natural zero. For example, temperature and years. 
the ratio level is when the data can be arranged in some order for which the differences between data values are meaningful, and there is a natural zero that represents the absence of the quantity. For example, distances and prices. Note that the first classification addresses what the data looks like, and the latter classification addresses what can be done with the data mathematically. We can match the two classifications in the following way. Also note that the framework of distinguishing levels of measurement was originated in psychology and is widely criticized by scholars in other disciplines. We just discussed different types of data and different ways to classify data.